Good evening, everyone. Welcome to worship this evening. And my only announcement is to remember that the Lenten offerings are going to the Buddy Pack program and to social ministry. Let us begin our worship with the opening liturgy. And so you all stay awake. Please stand up. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts honor Christ as holy, always being prepared to make a defense when who asks you the reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. And give glory to God, raised him up, and gave us the promise of salvation. Jesus sent us as his witnesses to proclaim his gospel in all that we do and say. Lord, we confess that we are often tongue-tied and silent when we should speak, when we are bound in our sights, and we should act in your name. Forgive us, Lord, for our reluctance to proclaim the good news that we treasure. Forgive our selfish clinging need for ourselves, our unwillingness to offer your gifts freely to those around us. Forgive our empty promises, our silent passing by, our blindness to others. Equip and empower us. Send us mightily into your world. Fill us so full of your gracious love and forgiveness that we cannot but shout his name and overflow with the grips of it. In his mercy, God has promised forgiveness for all your sins. You can rejoice. Your sins are forgiven in Christ Jesus, and you are wrapped in his forgiving love forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, with steadfast love, you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Maybe. 
Our first lesson this evening is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. Then they seized him and led him away bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat, sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly, this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately... While he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and went and wept bitterly. The Gospel of the Lord. Crossroads, they are there for all of us. We may move along them from day to day easily, walking in the sunshine, enjoying the view, feeling at peace. And then it comes, a crossroad, a choice point. There we stand, frozen to the spot. Which way now? Right, left, straight? What weights down each of those choices? Which way does our heart call us to go? Which makes sense? Which is God's way? The answers aren't easy. A crossroad can bring daunting spiritual pain, and it can bring us to our knees. It can even bring us to destruction. Tonight, we are, have an expert on the crossroad of declaration. The Apostle Peter is with us. Peter is famous for his choices. Some he would be proud of, some not. Peter, we seem to know you so well. We hear of you often in the scripture. It's good to have you with us today. I'm here to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am his servant and follower. I think I know why I'm here. 
And I am not pleased. No? I thought you would be happy to be among us with your good news. Oh, yes, certainly. But I suspect you want to focus on a time when I did not make a choice to be a proud witness, a time when I failed. That's what's puzzling to us and why we want to look at that event, at the time when you denied Jesus. It seems hard to understand. You were a leader of the disciples, the one who seemed to understand Jesus and what he was doing as Messiah. I thought I understood. Jesus even complimented me on my bold witness to who he was as God's Messiah. He called me blessed, filled with God's word. But then, even after you were warned, you denied him three times. If I could go back now and face that crossroads again, I would know what to do. You see, I thought I knew what Jesus was doing. In spite of the times he told us he was going to suffer and die, I still thought he would be what we hoped he would be. After all, he paraded, he paraded into the city of Jerusalem in a way that said that he was the coming king. I thought we were on the way to having God's Messiah as the king and ruler we needed. I didn't know what all that talk of suffering was about. And that's why you could not speak his name when you were in the priest's courtyard? Well, at that point, everything was going wrong. He wasn't supposed to be arrested. I even tried to fight for him. He wasn't supposed to be on trial. Where was his power? Where were his miracles? Where was the ability to simply walk away when they threatened him? At that point, when they accused me, I saw Jesus failing, and I failed. Were you afraid? Afraid, yes, I guess so. But I was baffled, confused, disappointed, in despair. That's not an excuse, it is just what happened. You had said you would even die with him. Didn't you mean that? That was my quick mouth. Another time I spoke without thinking. I just said that to impress Jesus and the others. I was looking for another compliment. It was important for me to know that Jesus respected me, thought I was worthwhile. I needed him to appreciate me and what I had done for him. And his warning? Didn't you hear his warning? Jesus said many things I didn't really understand at the time. I guess I just wasn't hearing. It was easy for me, and I'm sure for you too, to see myself as strong in the faith, able to speak the right words, able to be the one to stand up for Jesus, able to witness. But when I was in that situation, I could not choose the path I knew I should choose. I could not say the words I knew I needed to say. It was dark in my spirit at that moment, and I could not see, could not speak. A terrible time more terrible than you can know. Oh, I know that all of us find ourselves at places where we know we should speak the good word. I know what it is like for you. You find yourselves among those who dirty their minds and mouths with words that hurt or shame. I know you find yourselves among those who misuse God's name, act as though his commandments don't exist. I know you struggle in your minds with what to say and do in those situations. The questions come. Will my words of faith help? Will they be effective? Won't what I say set me apart, make me look foolish, ruin my relationships? Isn't it better to keep quiet or just go along? I know, you may not face a time when your words would put you in danger for your life, but certainly there are times when we all find ourselves at a crossroads that calls on us to boldly speak Jesus' name in God's will, and we fail. You know us too well. We do not speak the words that we should when we should. I guess the best part of my story is that I did not finish my discipleship in tears of failure. Jesus came and found me that day on the beach after he had risen. He loved me enough to call me back after I had turned my back on him. Do you love me? He asked me three times, and he sent me to feed his lambs, lambs and sheep. And here is the best part. He calls you back too. He does not leave us in our failure. He does not turn away. He is there each day with forgiveness, and we need to go on one more day to face one more test, to stand at one more crossroad. And by his power, the power of his Holy Spirit, to be what he wants us to be, what we want to be. St. Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. That's our affirmation. 
That's our calling. We can stand and speak the good news because he has done all for us. Certainly, most certainly so. Remember that you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Seek his power to walk in the light. Jesus, you are the bread of life. Bless these gifts that have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with your holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.